Alrighty, so we have our Linux distro fired up on Amazon LightSail. To access the terminal or the command line of our system, you can click this little button right here and it'll pop open a new window. When you're done to stop your instance, which you should do unless you're like wasting time, money, and energy, you click these three dots and you come over to stop and this will shut off the computer. Um, so if you've never used a terminal or the command line before, it is a way of sending commands to the operating system and moving around the computer and basically having it do stuff. Uh, so when you come into the terminal, you have all this basic information. You see our system load, our usage of our memory. So we've used 3.9% of all of our memory. Um, see our swap usage, the number of processes we have, the number of users logged in. Um, I installed Docker, so we have my IP address for the Docker daemon, but my IP address for the web, you probably won't have that on your uh, terminal, but my IP address for the web, IPv4, is this address. So if we ran a web server, we'd come to this address. And then the IPv6 is this long, long number right here. And then we have a message about our packages. So we have 304 updates, um, 204 of them are security updates, which is just awesome. And then we have a new release for our distro. Um, and we'll get into that later, but we're gonna go over package management in this video. And if we wanna get rid of all this stuff on the terminal, we can just press clear. So a package is basically just a piece of software. I like to think of it like an app. And we can download software not from the app store, but with, with the APT package manager. So if you just type in the command APT, you'll get a list of an explanation. APT is a command line package manager. And if you want even more info, you can check the manual pages by doing man APT. And you can run man with any command and it'll bring you to the Linux manual pages. And to get out of this, you press Q. So if we wanted to list our upgradable packages, we do apt list dash dash upgradable. And you see we have TCP dump, which is a network monitoring thing, systemd, sudo, we have a whole lot of updates. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to know the difference between apt update and apt upgrade. So basically all of these packages are stored in different places and apt ne needs to know where to get them. Um, this file is stored in slash etc. So if we change directories, we'll go over that command later, but it just follow me. So we go cd slash etc. We run ls, I believe there's an apt directory, we do CP, cd apt, run ls one more time, we'll see we have our sources.list, so we'll just do less sources.list, and this will be the sources for all of our um, software, so this is where all our software is getting downloaded from, and this sources, well hold on, we'll do, yeah, so this sources, um, Dot list it basically holds you know it's it's how our uh, apt package manager knows a when our packages are outdated and b where to download them so if we run apt update we're going to be updating the sources.list file we're actually pulling the data from sources.list and creating our you know seeing where our packages are expired and you see we could not open this file, um, permission denied, we'll go over permissions later. So basically what we need to do is we need to use sudo and the sudo command is when um, we run a command as what's called a root user, which is basically an admin user, a user with higher privileges. And we just do that to compartmentalize things. Um, it makes things more secure. So you can basically think this is a really important file. We only want certain people to read it, which is why it is protected with a, a, you know, a certain number of permissions. So we do sudo apt update. You'll see it reads all the data from that um, web
web address that was in our uh, list file, sources.list file. And now this is going to take a second. So we have even more packages. We see it builds our dependency tree, reading our package list. So basically, this is just a remote server, a bunch of different remote servers. One is run by uh, Amazon EC2, and then the other is run by Ubuntu, and the other one is run by Docker. So depending on where our software is from, its information will be held somewhere else. But now that we have updated our package list and we know which software we want to update, we can run apt upgrade to actually run that software. So we'll do apt upgrade. You see again, we get permission denied. So we'll do sudo apt upgrade. You see this is a whole lot of packages and a lot of people wrote this stuff for free. So say thank you. And this is just a, a memory warning about our disk space. You can just press you may or may not have this, but you can press Y to answer that, and it will download the correct packages. You can see some of the names of the outdated packages that we had earlier. And it's preparing and unpacking these packages. And when it uh, says unpacking packages, basically all that means is that uh, the files were compressed to make them easier to transport. And uh, I'm not a genius or nothing, but uh, compression just means that you take a lot of data and you squeeze it into a lower place. Um, hopefully this runs pretty quick. I had no idea there's so many outdated packages, but you see we get this nice little progress bar. <coughs> And feel free to fast forward through this. I don't know when it's going to end. You know what? Let me open a new terminal just so I can do something. So most of the time, people will just do sudo apt update, and they'll do and and apt upgrade and we'll just run both commands in sync um, I'm obviously not gonna update those twice so if you want to get out of this you just press control C but if we come back over to our other terminal okay we're still downloading so what we're gonna do now is actually just install some package so if we type in apt again we see apt install so let's say we wanted to do a, uh, we want to download a package. I think Ruby already comes installed, so we have which Ruby? No, we don't have any Ruby. So we can do apt install Ruby. We'll sudo apt install Ruby. Oops. Let's just control C out of that. I think we have to wait for this to finish. This usually doesn't take this long, but again, I obviously had 300 outdated packages. Um, but the version installed has locally been modified. So we're just going to keep the local version because that's something AWS set up for us. We'll get out of that screen. And we are almost there. <clears throat> da, na, na, na. Hopefully you fast forward through this because your time on this planet is only so finite. Da, na, 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 na. We're at 99%. And 
Come on now. So it's updating our boot, something in our boot file, which is, I believe, the kernel of our, our image. Come on now. This is the worst time to do this. And everything is updated. All right, so we're going to get out of the Etsy apt directory by just doing cd. We'll go over directory stuff later. But before I ran this command, which Ruby, so the which command basically tells us, you know, which version of whatever command we're using. So if I want to see which version, or I'm sorry, not which version, but where our command is installed, uh, I would do like which apt, and it'll show you the folder. In this case, it's in bin, which stands for binary. But because we had which Ruby came up blank, we know we don't have Ruby installed. So if I want to install Ruby, I could do sudo apt install Ruby. You see, we get another memory warning. And with every package, there's going to be a bunch of stuff. You know, other packages. What the, they're called dependencies. So our software has a bunch of stuff. Um, are no longer required, blah, blah, blah. So apt auto remove, we'll do that later. So yeah, this is basically just saying we need all this stuff to actually run Ruby. So we'll press Y. See, this is much faster. So if I run which Ruby, see we have user bin Ruby, we can run IRB, puts hello world. Oops. Press control C, oh, exit. Um, if I wanted to run, I mean, if I wanted to install the sleuth kit, which we're gonna do, we'll do apt install sleuth kit. Oops, sudo apt install. Is it the sleuth kit or sleuth kit? Hold on, sleuth kit install. Uh, so this is just open source digital forensics. I'm gonna do a series on that because that is the best way for me to learn. Uh, download. Gosh darn it. All right. Whatever, so we'll just do apt install sleuth kit. Do yes, yeah, this is the right package. Um, so now we know how to install packages, we know how to update our package dependency tree, we know how to upgrade our packages, we know about package managers, we basically have a job. <laughs> so now I can run which sleuth kit. Oh, well, let me explain why that came up blank. The sleuth kit is actually a collection of tools, none of which I can name off the top of my head. <laughs> but uh, if we do man sleuth kit. Oh, I thought that would work. That's so embarrassing. Well, I'm not restarting this video over because I'll have nothing to update. Um, what I'll, oh yeah, we wanted to do apt auto remove. So let's just run apt remove automatically all unused packages. That seems like a good idea for a couple reasons. It saves space on our computer um, and it also will prevent like security issues. So say we have a package, we don't use it, but it's outdated, someone else could use it to get into our computer. So we can just do man apt if we want to read more about auto remove. We scroll down with the down arrow. So auto remove is used to remove packages that were automatically installed to satisfy dependencies for other packages and are now lo no longer needed. So it's just cleaning things up for us. Uh, you, we can keep scrolling. You see we get uh, you know, our, where to report bugs. We get, uh, usually they'll have the authors. Um, in this case, it's the APT team. It's the Advanced Persistent Threat Team. So an Advanced Persistent Threat is like a nation state hacker group. I find it awfully suspicious that the package manager is named APT. But if it's backdoored, what am I gonna do? So we can quit out of this. We'll do, gonna need pseudo privileges again. Something we will go over in the next video. And as Michael Hartle says in his tutorials, you need technical sophistication, but you don't need to know everything. So there's sudo apt auto remove. So zero, two to remove, zero not upgraded. So yeah, we're freeing up 
628 kilobytes. So a kilobyte is a thousand bytes, by the way. And that is that. So one more thing before we go, I'm not sure how long this video is. When I run a command, you'll usually see things like, you know, dash dash whatever or dash H. So the definite, the, uh, the definitive Unix standard is when you're running a command, these are called flags. So if I have ls dash L, that's like an abbreviation, which is for list, or I can do ls dash dash list. Oops. Oh, we see here, ls dash dash help, right? And we have ls dash H. The ba the basically the the sometimes usually what they'll do is they'll do like dash dash help and then dash h but they didn't do it for ls whatever you use two dashes the point I'm trying to make is that you use two dashes when you're using a whole word and you use one dash when you're using an abbreviation or one letter and that is that all right you're pretty much a Linux expert so in the next video we're gonna go over a basic directory, you know, uh, movement, learning what the heck is a directory, and we're going to get into like files and stuff like that. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, just send me money, please. This is a horrible tutorial. I don't know why you're watching this, but just send me money. I'm making dog shit money right now, but whatever. And I'll see you in the next video. Check out my podcast. Link in the description. Goodbye. Thank you.